A wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss one of the most groundbreaking discoveries in astronomy and astrophysics that was technically announced last year, but has now received one of its major updates. And here we're talking about the discovery and the confirmation of what the scientists refer to as gravitational wave background. Basically, the discovery that the entire universe is kind of vibrating and oscillating as a result of something that we still don't understand, but it's always been suggested to be supermassive black holes. And so the confirmation of this constant vibration that was discovered by using the entire galaxy as a kind of a telescope is actually one of the biggest breakthroughs in astronomy and I'm pretty certain it's going to lead to some kind of a Nobel Prize. But let's discuss some of these new updates and some of the new discoveries that once again don't actually make that much sense. And so first, let's start with the basics. We know that our universe has a lot of different types of background radiation as a result of very powerful events. The most famous one is the one you see right here, known as CMB, or the cosmic microwave background. This is a result of a major shift in the universe that happened approximately 379,000 years following the Big Bang, when basically a lot of atoms formed because the universe was cooling down and a lot of matter started to condense. Or essentially this was a transition from plasma to actual protons and electrons that combined into neutral atoms. But there are obviously a lot of other types of background radiation, with each of them being formed by something extreme. And for many many decades, one of the more mysterious types of backgrounds was actually in regards to the hypothetical idea known as gravitational waves. And I'm saying hypothetical because until 2015, this was just a hypothesis and nobody actually knew if this was going to be real. And that's because all of this was based on various Einsteinian theories and the suggestion that a lot of massive objects should be able to produce different types of gravitational waves, representing a kind of a displacement in the gravitational field when very massive objects move really close to one another. Although technically this can also be caused by things like tiny imperfections in, for example, pulsars, such as tiny mountains, which will also actually cause gravitational waves. But like a lot of other waves, gravitational waves also have their own spectrum. And while the collision of black holes discovered in 2015 produced oscillations in hundreds of hertz, because that's basically how fast these black holes were orbiting one another before the eventual collision. And while in this case, in order to detect these frequencies, or basically in order to capture something that's approximately a few hundred to maybe a few thousand hertz when it comes to gravitational waves, researchers had to construct something like this. A facility that's several kilometers in length, in this case this is the famous LIGO facility, that basically shines a really powerful laser for several kilometers in order to detect minute deviations that could be produced by these gravitational waves. And that's because in order to detect frequencies of hundreds to thousands of hertz, we basically have to have a facility that's several kilometers in length. But the thing is, these facilities can only detect high frequencies. And so anything with a much higher wavelength, for example something produced by massive objects such as supermassive black holes in orbit around one another, would not be visible to LIGO. And that's because in this case, the wave period is actually measured in months and in years instead of being measured in seconds and milliseconds. And so detecting this type of frequency would be basically impossible with anything on planet Earth. But a couple of decades back, researchers made a somewhat intriguing proposition. What if we actually use pulsars as a kind of a gravitational wave detector? And specifically, since pulsars emit frequencies so precisely, and any minute deviation is very easily measurable, and also since we know their location in the galaxy pretty well, what if we then use a bunch of pulsars around us and observe them for a very very long time, let's just say 10 years or so, in order to see if there's maybe some kind of a pattern and some kind of a deviation when it comes to their emissions. Because in theory, if there are these massive gravitational waves, I guess you would even call them gravitational tsunamis, produced by for example supermassive black holes, they should in theory shift the emissions from these pulsars once in a while, basically following some kind of a wave-like pattern as these pulsars are slightly pushed away and then pushed toward us, maybe every few months, maybe every few years, and so on. And this idea eventually became an actual experiment. And not just one experiment, multiple experiments now referred to as IPTA, International Pulsar Timing Array. Here's just some of the researchers participating in this. And that actually became one of the coolest and one of the most mind-blowing experiments humans have ever attempted. It was basically an attempt to use various radio telescopes from across the planet 
and from various regions on the planet to basically consistently track pulsars in order to discover minute deviations and to then potentially discover massive gravitational waves. And as you might have learned from one of the previous videos, which should be in the description, they actually have discovered it. Sometimes in 2023, they officially confirmed that the universe is definitely vibrating, as visible from the observations from multiple pulsars. But there was one major question. It was actually not clear what's causing it. I mean, the official explanation was maybe supermassive black holes, but what if these vibrations were actually from the Big Bang itself, or what if these vibrations were from something else like interaction of dark matter? In other words, it was not clear what's happening here, but it was very, very clear that something was happening because the results were confirmed several times. But now, after just over one year, we have even more results and even more discoveries from one of the largest collaboration involved. And so the Meerkat Pulsar Timing Array, which you can learn more about in one of the links in the description, made this galactic-sized telescope even bigger. This super-sensitive radio telescope used a group of 83 pulsars for approximately five years, precisely measuring every single pulse arriving to planet Earth. And so by observing so many pulsars at the same time, it allowed the researchers to visualize what kind of waves are stretching and squeezing the space between Earth and the pulsars, and more importantly, discover where most of them seem to be coming from. And in just these five years, not only were the previous signals confirmed, they also did something that was not possible before. They actually created a map, which is literally the first ever gravitational wave map ever created by anyone. The map that shows us the slightly higher chance of a gravitational wave, and of course all of the pulsars involved. But instead of seeing just a single wave, here we are actually seeing something similar to a typical surface of the ocean. A bunch of waves crisscrossing, interacting and creating ripples, which is why it's called gravitational wave background and not really a gravitational wave. But in this new map there is also a new mystery. This signal seems to be much, much more active than ever predicted. In other words, we seem to be observing way more waves than expected in modern cosmology. And not just more waves, but more powerful waves. Which of course means that maybe there are more supermassive black holes orbiting one another, or maybe something else contributes to these waves, which by itself would be a new mystery. But even more importantly, there is a new hint potentially explaining what forms most of these waves. This map actually shows us an intriguing hotspot that seems to be visible in the southern hemisphere. And this peculiar irregularity can only be formed if this is indeed the result of supermassive black holes and not some kind of a background coming from everywhere. Because if this was a universal vibration of the universe, the result of, for example, Big Bang, we would actually not see these hotspots, or they would not be as massive and as pronounced. But here this hotspot suggests that, for some reason, in the southern hemisphere, we do seem to have a lot more waves. Although here there's actually something that's not mentioned in the study, and something that made me scratch my head and maybe think that this is some kind of a bias. If you look at the map, you'll notice that most of the pulsars observed are also in the southern hemisphere. And that's because this was in South Africa, so seeing the North Hemisphere is a little bit challenging. And so maybe this is a kind of a bias. But that's of course something that can be confirmed by additional observations from North America and from Europe. Either way, it's still a little bit too early to say if this is something real or if this is some kind of a statistical anomaly or some kind of a bias. But like I said, if it is real, it has to be supermassive black holes. And since in this case, the waves were also observed to be much, much louder, along with the hotspot, this obviously raises a lot of new questions. So essentially what we have now is a direct confirmation that gravitational wave background is definitely real, the universe is definitely vibrating, and a lot of this vibration is potentially caused by infolling supermassive black holes. But either there are way more of them than we expected, or there is something else that contributes to all of these vibrations. And what that something is, is a new mystery. Which naturally means we're going to have even more observations and even more data coming out in the next few years, simply because this is a super intriguing mystery. What's causing these low-frequency gravitational waves, and why are these recent, more accurate results so different from what was predicted or even from what was originally discovered? But because in this case they were also able to create the first ever map, I can only imagine that in the next 10 years we're actually going to see something absolutely impressive. The more pulsars we discover and the more we observe them, the more accurate this map is going to get, eventually revealing the entire cosmic architecture of the nearby universe. Something we cannot even imagine yet, and something that's going to be mind-blowing. But I think the first question researchers are going to try to answer is, what's actually causing this extra vibration? Is this caused by something following the Big Bang? 
for example some kind of a transition in the universe, or some kind of an energy shift, or they would just discover a new exotic event. And so either way this is going to be super exciting to follow, but we're probably not going to hear about this for at least one more year. In order to study this, they have to observe these pulsars for a very long time, and so this is a super slow experiment that's most likely going to take a few decades to finally complete. But I'm definitely going to follow all of the progress and release all of the updates in some of the future videos. Until then, check out previous videos on this topic in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.